Hey, welcome back to the podcast. My name is Rob Balasabas. Really glad to have you here. If you are new, then welcome. If you have been here for a while, then welcome back. Uh, really glad to have you here. Like I said, um, yeah, this podcast is all about content creators, content creation, the creator economy. We just talk about different things around that, around that space, um, specifically to creators and how to build revenue streams around their content and uh, build a business around it. Um, you know, so I'm a creator myself. I have a YouTube channel, which might be where you're catching this video uh, podcast. I have a podcast. I'm active on LinkedIn and Instagram as well. Um, and when I'm not doing all that stuff on my personal channel, I am the head of partnerships and community at a company called uscreen.tv uh, is the website, uscreen.tv. And so we're a membership platform and I get to hang out out and work with influencers, content creators, uh, people in the media industry, uh, which is now commonly known as the creator economy um, by some people. Um, and so it's a growing, growing industry. And so if you're part of that, then really excited to have you here. Uh, this is you, you're at the right place. <laughs> you found the right place. Um, and so hopefully you uh, settle in, you enjoy uh, this episode, other episodes as well, uh, tune in. Um, you might even consider subscribing. Sorry, my lips are super chapped, so I gotta, or else I'm gonna start looking and sounding a little funny. Um, anyways, yeah, really excited to have you here. Uh, this is a uh, video podcast, um, it's an audio podcast as well, so you may be listening to this on the audio version on Stitcher or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you might be listening to this, um, but there's a video version, if you're curious, there is a video version on my YouTube channel, just look up my name, copy and paste my name, Rob Balasabas on YouTube, and you'll find my YouTube channel, it's just by the same name as well, nothing fancy, no no gimmick there, just my name, look for Rob Balasabas, um, and you'll find my podcast, uh, this is, as far as I know, should be episode 86, we're getting really close to episode 100, um, episode 86, it is Monday, March 27th. I'm looking up here. If you're looking, I'm looking at the top of my computer monitor to see what the date is. It is Monday, March 27th. And um, yeah, it's a beautiful day today. It was a beautiful day in Vancouver today. That's where I'm based in uh, beautiful British Columbia, Vancouver on the West Coast. It's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful part of the world. Um, and uh, and yeah, so we're, we're uh, coming up to spring. Very exciting. You know, I'm, I feel the, um, the atmosphere of just people they're generally happier they're more motivated they're very like they're very um uh interested in in taking action whether it's like you know there's this kind of second wave i find like there's the new year's resolution i was actually talking to my colleague about this there's a new year's resolution right people get really excited about january 1st january and like hey i want to do all these things i want to start a new business i want to launch a new thing i have a new idea i want to get in shape i want to go to the gym you know, I have all these things. I want to start new habits. And then that kind of fades, right? Around February or so, people kind of fade off and they get back to just the way they were doing things. Um, but I find that I feel like around this time of year, March, April, you know, we're, we're going from like, you know, the gloomy winter weather into like the sunny, warmer weather, you know, in general, most part of the world, most parts of the world. And so I find that there's like sort of like this new second wave of motivation. I find that that's kind of where we're at right now. You know, I'm talking to a lot of uh, content creators. They're launching new things and um, they're taking another run at things that they started to launch, launching a new membership, launching a new uh, community, launching a new newsletter, right? Um, really going back to their YouTube channel and kind of revamping it and looking at strategy again and like trying to figure it out, make it better and really make it work this time, you know, hire an editor, you know, sort of like a second wind, a second, let's, let's loop back. Let's try it again. Let's, you know, I kind of learned, I learned what was good and what was, didn't work out last time. And let me try that again. I feel like that's kind of where we're at right now. I feel that in the air when I talk to people and I get to talk to, you know, I'm priv you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate to get to talk to a lot of people all over the world, just, with my role and the podcast and um, you know, I got a amazing community of peers and friends um, that are in the industry and get to share notes. And it's kind of the same uh, sort of, um, you know, outlook that everybody else is getting too. is that, yeah, there's sort of the second win. So anyways, 
We're at episode 86 of the podcast, and I hope you're enjoying it so far. I don't know when you started listening to the podcast, maybe episode one, or maybe it was just the last episode, or maybe this is the first episode that you're listening to this podcast on. But regardless, I'm really excited that and happy that you are here, that you found us, um, that you're connected with uh, the podcast now. I'd love to connect with you outside of this podcast um, honestly that's my goal is to connect with you outside of this podcast whether that's on LinkedIn or Instagram um, connect with me or leave a comment leave a comment on uh, on YouTube or on Spotify and just say hello let me know what you are about what your channel is would love to check out your content and um, just learn about you and get to know you more Um, and this is really why I launched a podcast I kind of always touch on this a little bit at every episode People ask me, why did you launch the podcast? How do you monetize it? Um, you know, and uh, and there's different ways, right? There's different ways. I mean, if it's on YouTube, there's AdSense. There's so many different things that can happen there. There's sponsorships as well. Um, and, you know, and, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Definitely want to shout out StreamYard. They've been just uh, such loyal supporters of this channel for years. And so um, thank you for them. So, you know, there's sponsorships and things like that. But, um, you know, beyond all of that, really, it's just a way for me. I really just wanted to create a podcast to be able to talk to creators um, en masse, you know, and just, um, you know, really, I guess, scale my reach to share what I get to know and learn, um, not just in my own practice of doing work in this industry of media and content creation and monetization um and um you know the access that i get to have which is a privilege i know and um it's a blessing to have access to different creators different tools um different events and conferences and be in different rooms that man i would love everybody to be in that room um you know and sitting at the table and having conversations with um, some large creators and very successful, you know, entrepreneurs um, and industry people, you know, that really make things happen. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm very, hum- you know, very humbled by those moments and those that access. And so really, that's really why I created the podcast is, yes, down the road. Now we're here. It's monetized. There's different revenue streams from the podcast. Yes. Hopefully you don't feel that. You know, hopefully you don't feel like this is a one big long commercial. Um, you know, but really, truthfully, it's really for community. And you know, another part of this is that I work remotely. I work from home. Um, you know, you screen. We're fully remote. And so um, I just really enjoy this podcast because it is a way for me to connect, to interview different creators, just an excuse to connect with them and to have conversations and to learn from them, um, you know, and so the, that's really why I, you know, long answer to, to that question of why do you even have a podcast is for that reason. Now, there are other podcasters out there and other content creators in general where you have different content channels that's really meant to serve other purposes maybe it is to uh, generate clients and generate leads and sell digital products and sell books and courses and memberships and open up opportunities to get um, you know paid speaking gigs at conferences that's also fine that's totally fine all of that can happen in one podcast or one youtube channel all of those opportunities on all those do- all those doors can open through one channel, one podcast, one live show, live stream show on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, it's it's totally fine, right? It's totally okay. Like a lot of, I do see a lot of creators, and I, I know I'm kind of going on on a bit of a rant here, but a lot of creators really don't feel justified to be able to. Uh, open up those opportunities for themselves they kind of feel like hey i can't demand these things or i can't ask for these things i can't have a sponsor for my podcast or my you know my youtube channel or my instagram or my linkedin live show i can't have those sponsors or i can't ask people to join my membership where i'm getting them to pay for premium content you know i i want to do this for free i want to give it away for free you know and um, I think those that mentality is so limiting because who said that you had to give it away for free? You're you're putting money into this to 
uh, really share and give value to others. Not only that, that your audience want to be able to pay you. They do, honestly. And I talk to a lot of creators. I talk to a lot of people that are in their world, that are in their audience. They want to pay you. They want to support you. They want to be part of that. You know, that's why crowdfunding, um, you know, Kickstarter is such a fantastic and successful platform because people want to support other people that they like, that they get value from, that they learn from, that they're, they're entertained by, they are that they are um, getting value from. And that's really it is the best way to say it. You know, whether it's inspiration, education, entertainment, they're getting value from you. They're they're able to access uh, a community that you built. You've created a space maybe for them, for people that are interested in the same things that they are. And um, they are thankful for that. And as human beings, I really believe that we don't want to feel indebted to somebody else to get things for free. I know most people like, you know, there's <laughs> there's always jokes like, you know, you got this bet, you know, when you get a good deal, right? When somebody, you know, when you buy a car, you always kind of brag about how awesome of a deal you got to bargain the guy down, right? You know, I really hammered him down. I really chiseled him down. You know, he wanted, you know, 50 grand. I got it for 30 grand. Like you, you, you tell those stories, right? Um, but, you know, I think this world that we're in as a content creator, it's a different world. I think I think the mentality is different. I think nobody's going to brag that they got, you know, a free membership or a free thing from a creator because I think everybody understands that creators work really hard. They're artists, they're creatives, they're putting their heart and soul into their content. They really care for the audience that they're building and the community that's rallying around them. And I don't think people brag that they got stuff for free from a creator. I think, in, in fact, it's probably the opposite, that they want, they really hope uh, that a creator has a way for them to support them. You know, they, or, or what I mean by that is that they really hope that the creator creates an opportunity for them, the audience member, to support them, whether that's through a membership, let me buy your book. Do you have a book? Do you have a course? Let me buy something from you. Do you have merch? Let me buy something from you because, you know, you really helped me. You've given me value. Let me support you so that you can do this and continue doing this, right? Um, that's why these platforms are so popular. There's, you know, buy me a coffee and a Patreon. You know, all of these platforms are so popular, right? Kickstarter. Um, because people want to get behind you. They want to be part of your journey. They want you to succeed, right? And so... Again, I don't even know how I got into this. I had other topics that I wanted to talk about, honestly, um, in this episode. But that really is, I think, one of the first things that a content creator that wants to become a full-time content creator has to get over is that idea of, hey, I can't, I, you got to be comfortable about talking money. You got to be com- comfortable about the taboo idea of revenue and charging you know, I've always told this, I've said, I've been saying this for a couple years now, is that successful content creators, one of the main differences between them and, and um, hobbyist content creators is that they're able to monetize their audience directly. So they're able to not only, you know, all creators, it's super easy to have a YouTube channel, to have a Spotify uh, podcast where you're making money from the platform. You're getting AdSense dollars. Uh, you're getting um, money from the creator fund if you're on TikTok or, or sorry, on Reels and TikTok and stuff. There's these you can earn from the platform. Little a little uh, a little slice of the pie, right? A little percentage of the ad dollars that is spent by brands that are getting in front of your videos, right? In front of your content. So that is one way. Everybody can do that. You know, every creator, you know, sometimes you have to hit a certain milestone or, you know, qualify, you know, you have to, you know, for YouTube, you have to be part of the YouTube partner program, but everybody can be part of that. It's kind of automatic. Um, what separates those hobbyist creators, though, and the for for the most part and, and the creators that even if they have a small audience, 
really fast tracks and gets to the point where they can do this full time is when they can create a product and monetize their audience so that they're not only getting paid by the platform, but they're getting paid by their audience members. And I know that sounds super scary for a lot of creators to be like, no, I can never charge my audience. That's crazy. Like I could never do that. I'd never do that. That just, I feel like I'm selling out. I feel like, you know, I could never do that. You know, they, I, I want to give this to them for free. And that is when the conversation starts that we just had for the last, you know, 15, 10 minutes here about feeling not taboo, not dirty, not icky about charging your audience, but really actually you're doing a service for your create for your audience. And always remember this too, is that when you have more resources, then you can do bigger things. You can do things better. You can, man, if you have, if you're making regular revenue, again, let's say you have a membership and your audience members are supporting you. You have this recurring revenue now, right? If you have a monthly membership for premium content, premium uh, community, maybe a exclusive members only live stream, where if you have a regular recurring revenue stream like that, then you can plan for your business. You can plan ahead. You can invest in an uh, editor. An editor will free up how much of your time? Maybe 10 hours, 20 hours a week to do other things. Maybe now you can create more content, right? Better quality content. You can spend time less time editing and more time scripting right? You can spend less time editing and more time thinking about your content strategy and coming up with more creative things, right? And really hone in on what you are good at so that you can outsource some of the things that you don't want to do, but then create better quality content, more consistent content, more frequent content, right? And it will only serve your audience even better. They'll be happier. They'll be more, um, they'll be more satisfied. <laughs> kind of a weird thing to say, but they will just have, just be, get more value from your content, from your channel, and that's what pe- that's what that's what that will do. That will allow you to do that, right? You can provide jobs, right? You can help the economy. I know <laughs> this is getting political, but you can help the economy. You can add value to the economy, and not just yes, you can put yourself full time, but then you can hire people. And now you're helping others, right? You're helping to put food um, on other people's tables, right? You're helping to give jobs to different people around the world, right? Giving opportunities, all of these things, man, you're doing so much now, you know, and you got to be, but that starts with you being courageous enough to say, hey, I've got really good content. I've got really good value. And I'm going to create products so that I can build this, these different revenue streams and I can fast track my path to becoming a full-time creator. So that's my little rant today. The other thing I wanted to talk about, and let me know what your thoughts are about that. I mean, if you are a full-time creator, that's not the path you took. This is a conversation. My, my opinion, my thought on this is not the only way. Um, if you really took your time, I would love to hear about it. If you did take this route where you're just like, hey, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to start charging my audience uh, something. I'm going to start selling something, um, you know, package my, my, my knowledge um, into products that I can sell, digital products, merch maybe, fix physical goods. Man, I was just, I, I read this, um, I saw this LinkedIn post from somebody. Um, about um, Feastables, Mr. Beast's, you know, product. And man, it's all over Walmart. Um, and, um, you know, the prediction is that content creators will like start to flood the shelves at uh, physical department stores, at groceries and stuff like that in the next few years because they have this built-in audience, right? This audience on YouTube, this audience on Instagram, Um, you know, and so brands are going to start partnering with them, not just on sponsorships for their channel on YouTube and Instagram and and TikTok, 
TikTok, by the way. I'm not sure what where that's going to go. I'm actually really curious what you guys think about TikTok. I was watching some clips from the, um, you know, the, uh, you know, TikTok CEO um, in front of Congress the other day. Uh, very, very interesting. Um, some silly questions, <laughs> like some really, really silly questions. Also, my thought on it, I'd love to hear, I, you know, I'd, again, I'd love to hear your thought. We're digressing here, but this like privacy stuff is i don't think it's anything different than any other sort of platforms that we're giving our our information to you know like like yeah like literally so much you know like the other day i think i was out of town and um my uh my son my son got a little pop-up saying like hey it's time to go to church or whatever you know like on a sunday i was out of town i was in in texas but i was in austin um but he was just we were just kind of laughing like yeah no because it knows every sunday you go to church and so like there's this little thing that popped up you know and it's not like he set up an alarm or anything it just it just knows because it's tracking where his phone is and it knows it goes to church on sundays like hey by the way wake up it's time to go to church you know and so it's not you know i mean tiktok yes sort of like the 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 getting all the attention right now but i honestly think like we, we give our information we've we've made that deal a long time ago to uh you know our privacy uh you know and in, in, in exchange for convenience uh but anyways uh i would love to hear what you think about that i totally forget what i was where i was going but um okay yeah no um yeah feastables so um yeah so this post on linkedin i forget when who it was now it's going to come to mind right after that i i hit stop on this recording um but it was saying that you know content creators in the next few years will really take over the shelves on department stores uh, physical goods and things like that because they have a built-in audience and so this audience is like, yeah, not just wanting like sponsorships and to see them in videos and uh, see the brands in videos, but they now the brands are going to say, hey, no, let's build a product together. Let's sell it together. Makes sense, doesn't it? Doesn't does it not make sense? Makes sense. So much sense to me. Like, hey, you know, you guys are selling my our products through your videos on YouTube, on TikTok and Instagram. Let's actually make a product together and that'll sell even hotter, right? Like that'll sell even faster. And so um, that's where we're at. You know, that's where that's honestly where we're at. And it's exciting and it's great. And it's taking away the red tape uh, and bureaucracy of like going through these proper channels. Anybody, the world, it's like now it's open game. Anybody, you, you want to build an audience? You can, you have a phone, you have a camera, you have a webcam. You know, you can start making YouTube videos and tutorial videos. You can start vlogging. You know, you could start making reels and, and quick videos you know and like anything can happen you know there's all these stories you know um i mean there's just so many stories that i get to talk to different creators so just like literally within years a couple years you know a couple months like they built their audience now that doesn't happen to everybody of course there's you know caveats here that you know it takes a long time that's your expectation you got to put in the hours and put in the work but if you really i mean everything here building an audience is formulaic right? It's a formula, right? There's a formula to it. It's not like, it's not rocket science, right? And so we're in, in an age now where it's like, you can do that. You know, you can do that. And, 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 and the big end here is that you don't need a huge audience. You know, you literally do not need a huge audience. You can start getting brand deals, man. You would be surprised what people, what brands are um, looking to pay for different small audiences, right? You don't need a huge audience, right? You you know, you get 100 people that pay you $25 a month. What's that number, right? Like, that's not bad, right? That's not bad. That's a couple hundred, couple grand that can pay for like different things. And then now you start adding up these revenue streams. And before you know it, hey, it's not too bad. I could consider going full-time as a content creator, you know? Or if I don't go full-time, Hey, this is not bad. This is not a bad living for, you know, X hours a, a week, you know, um, and why not? I, why would I do this? Right. And, um, you know, the decision is up to you at that point, whether, whether or not you want to go all in or or you want to do this and, and still have your you know stable job. That's totally fine. That's my world. Right. My world right now is like that. You know, I love my job, love my day job. You know, I would not trade in for the world. I would not go full time. I know we're talking about full time. I would not go full time. I love my day job. 
you know, I love I love working at Uscreen. I love the people, I love the company, I love the leadership, the team members, I love the community, I love all of it. So there's no nothing can pull me away from that. Um, and uh, but I love that they allow me to create as well, you know, and it's just it's great. You know, I have my own YouTube channel. I get my fix to my creative fix to uh, do that, to play with cameras and, um, you know, uh, editing every now and then and, and all that stuff. Right. So it all looks different for everybody. Right. It all looks different for everybody. But um, the one thing I did want to talk about <laughs> is uh, chat GPT. I know everybody has an opinion on chat GPT, man. There are now chat GPT experts. I saw um, a pretty popular uh, publication just launched that they had a chat GPT course masterclass. I'm just like, man, things move so fast these days. I bet you that that course was written by chat GPT. <laughs> um, so anyways, um, I was just I was uh, actually just wanted to share that, like I was messing around with chat GPT and um yeah, it's so crazy. I, I put this thing in and I wanted to build. I was like, hey, maybe I can use ChatGPT for managing a Facebook group, you know. And so um, I put in, you know, hey, I want you to act as a community manager. Um, you know, you're going to get I'm going to be dropping comments here um, uh, from a Facebook group. I want you to answer based on this website using this blog uh, this blog site, not a specific article, but this blog, right, of all the different posts, um, this YouTube channel, I want you to pull from all this, this help center page, and I want you to come up with the answers, but also make it professional, friendly tone, um, you know, um, and uh, I want you to be engaging. And so it works. Like I start dropping this. Hey, this is comment from so and so. This is the this is the comment. It like would pop up. Um, a perfect day. I, I wouldn't say perfect I would say it's probably about 90% and then I have to go and still massage it just a little bit personalize it and just make sure that it's like actually you know pretty accurate but not bad you know for 20 bucks a month I mean that's one use case you can use it for so many different things and I know that people have and do and like are continuing to come up with crazy crazy ways and I know it's like sort of embedding and integrating with a bunch of tools now like i saw notion has it canva has it they're just like working with all these fantastic tools um i saw a guy create his own like uh slack api um to use for coaches using chat gpt i mean it's just crazy so um my question to you if you're re listening here if you're up to this point is i would love to hear what you use chat gpt for Especially as a content creator, I would love to hear what that is um, because I'm always looking for some new ideas on how to use ChatGPT. I have an account. I want to maximize it, to be honest. So let me know what you're using ChatGPT for. So there you have it. Um, I just realized this is almost half an hour. I'm going to wrap up uh, this episode. This is, again, episode 86. <laughs> episode 86. Um, really glad that you're here. I know I went, uh, went on a bit of a rant there earlier, but hopefully uh, you're still hanging out with us here. If you have any thoughts, any feedback, any um, suggestions on topics, any questions that I can answer for you, any hurdles that you're going through right now with your content, with your business, let me know. All I want to do here with this channel, this podcast, this YouTube channel is share as much ideas as I can, help unblock you with your business and your content creation as much as possible and really just share that with you. Um, all I ask in exchange is follow. Just follow along, whether it's subscribing to the podcast or subscribing on YouTube. That's it. And also to make sure you join the conversation. So make sure you comment, say hello, connect with me on YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn. That's all I ask. And um, any questions, I'm uh, open book. Any questions, I would love to answer for you. All right. So thanks for hanging out with me here. I will see you in the next episode. God bless you and take care. Bye-bye.